Let's talk about mercury poisoning now. Mercury is also known as quicksilver and it is a liquid matter with a bright silvery luster. Now mercury can exist in two forms. One is its metallic form and other is the sulfide or it is also known as cinnabar or sindoor. The metallic form is not poisonous. Why? Because it's not absorbed. Although its vaporized form can be inhaled uh, or swallowed or rubbed onto skin. Now why is mercury poisonous? What it does is basically it combines with sulfhydryl groups of enzymes, metabolic enzymes and thus interferes with metabolism. One thing to remember is that the mercuric form is more soluble and thus more poisonous than the mercurous form. Let's see what the sources of mercury are now. One is mercuric chloride or perchloride. Secondly, mercurous chloride or subchloride. Other compounds such as mercuric oxide, mercuric ammonium chloride, mercuric potassium iodide, mercuric nitrate, mercuric cyanide, etc. And also organic mercury compounds are the sources of mercury. Now one difference between mercuric chloride or perchloride and mercurous chloride or subchloride is that mercuric chloride is a white crystalline powder or tablet while mercurous chloride is amorphous. So mercuric is crystalline while mercurous is amorphous. Okay. So mercuric chloride is the main uh, poison used, uh, used or accidental in acute poisoning. The organic mercury compounds were used in the past as diuretics and also as fungicides. Let's now see acute mercury poisoning. The signs and symptoms can be divided into those related to the mouth and GIT and the others which are systemic. Now the mouth and GIT symptoms are metallic taste in the mouth, these symptoms, by the way, are very immediate in onset. There is throat constriction, burning sensation from the mouth to the stomach, like all irritant poisons do, corrosion of tongue and fauces, which are openings to the uh, opening to the oropharynx, nausea with frequent vomiting, while white strings of mucus and blood are seen in the vomit. There is purging and bloody and painful tenesmus. Other sim systemic symptoms are the same as those of min mineral acids and arsenic, that is collapse, cold, clammy skin, pale, anxious face, sunken eyes, dilated pupils, rapid pulse, and sighing respirations. Now, if due to these symptoms, due to the systemic symptoms, death occurs, then that would be because of syncope, convulsions, etc. But if not, then the patient will survive for about two to three days and then die of renal failure. After two to three days, the mouth will present with increased salivation, gums will be swollen and inflamed, there will be foul breath, loosening of teeth and ulcerative glossitis. Now the renal complications occur because of renal lesions and the urine has albumin and blood in it that leads to that is a symptom of renal failure and the death is due to uremic syndrome which means that there is increased uric acid and creatinine like substances in the blood now the fatal dose of mercury is about one to two grams only and the main uh, or most common mercury compound involved is the mercuric chloride or perchloride. The fatal period is about few hours if the patient dies of the syncope and convulsions and if not then there is delayed death uh, due to uremic syndrome. Now how to treat an acute mercury poison patient? There is actually stomach wash with sodium formaldehyde sulfoxalate. which converts mercury to a less soluble mercuric compound. 
Egg albumin can also be used for this purpose, which forms an insoluble albuminate of mercury. And this should be removed quickly uh, by emesis or gastric lavage because it should not be absorbed. Activated charcoal and magnesium sulfate should be given to absorb the poison. Magnesium sulfate increases its absorptive power. British antileucite agent and penicillin amine are used as antidotes. Dialysis for kidney, both peritoneal and hem um, hemodialysis can be used. General treatment for shock and symptomatic. Now on post-mortem appearances, the symptoms will be same as that of corrosive poison if the concentrated form of poison is taken. If diluted form is taken, then irritant poison like symptoms will be there. Findings will be there. Now the mouth will show grayish white escarotic appearance. Now on that point, let's see who remembers which bacteria caused black eskers. The GIT will be inflamed and mucous membrane will be corroded. The muscular coat of stomach uh, or in fact the whole GIT will be soft and easily ruptured. Now another point to remember about mercury is that it has a selective action on the large intestine because it is re-excreted into it. There will be intense inflammation, ulceration and gangrene. The kidneys will show signs of nephritis and liver and the heart will show fatty degeneration and the heart will show subendocardial hemorrhage due to liver compromise. Now coming to chronic mercury poisoning. Now how can it occur? Actually it can be the after effects of an acute attack. It can be medically administered unwisely. And thirdly it can be due to continuous accidental absorption. For example people who manufacture mercury thermometers, mirrors or barometers and or police handling uh, fingerprint powder. The signs and symptoms of chronic mercury poisoning will divide them uh, organ to system wise. Now the mouth will show excessive salivation, metallic taste, loosening of teeth, painful inflamed gums and a specific uh, symptom for mercury poisoning is blue black line on the gums as in lead poisoning too. There is skin irritation if mercury is rubbed onto the skin. There will be nephritis. Abortion can be there because after ingestion it can easily pass through the placenta. Mercurial lentis, it is a special feature of mercury poisoning and it is actually discolorization of lens capsule due to mercury deposition, although there is no effect on visual acuity. Now two important manifestations of chronic mercury poisoning on the nervous system are hatter's shake and erythism. Hatter's shake is basically a coarse intentional tremor affecting the hands, arms, tongue and the legs. It is common in industry workers they use to make hats. Do google this. Erythism is a personality disturbance actually. It leads to shyness, irritability, tremors, loss of memory and insomnia. It is common in mirror industry workers. The treatment of chronic mercury poisoning is basically to remove the patient from the source first. Then we have to increase the elimination of mercury that is already deposited through the bowel and kidneys and the rest treatment is symptomatic. The post-mortem appearance, the major finding will be in the large intestine due to re-excretion of mercury. Kidney damage will lead to tubular nephritis. We'll also see fatty degeneration of liver and cardiac muscle. Another point to remember is that in mercury poisoning or arsenic poisoning etc. we should preserve other organs such as bone, teeth, hair and nails too because they are deposited in them. The medical legal importance of uh, chronic mercury poisoning is that chronic or acute both actually it can be accidental due to antiseptic solutions or when they were used as diuretics children can also be poisoned when they handle or play with bleach creams and 
When mercury thiocyanate is ignited, an effect is produced which is known as the ferro serpent. It's very uh, beautiful, I'd say. You should check it out. The use of mercury in suicide and homicide is rare. It causes abortion, as I said, and chronically it can be the cause of poisoning in factory workers. That's all for mercury poisoning.